Constantine Persopoulos. I'm a professor of civil engineering. I work in the area of structural engineering and my specialty is earthquake resistant design and something that I'll be talking to you today, earthquake resilience. There's a tremendous group of, uh, of professors here uh, and I think personally, like if we're talking about my research, uh, what I think is outstanding is the students. I think that over the 10 years uh, that I've been here, uh, the people, the young students that I've worked with have been phenomenal. I think uh, the talent uh, and the, uh, the drive is tremendous. And just like anything else in life, uh, it all comes down to people. Now that being said, um, like you can see behind me, uh, good work, you need good facilities, and we have tremendous facilities here at the university. Um, and the other good thing about the university is its proximity to downtown Toronto. This is a hub of structural engineering for Canada and for the whole world. And so the fact that we're here and that we can interact with engineers in the industry that can come in and basically give us their advice and opinion on some of the systems that we're developing, I think is, is a huge advantage. Uh, it's a combination of all of these things that, that make uh, some of the success stories that we've been able to, uh, to achieve. Um, what we're trying to do is really uh, change the way earthquake engineering is actually uh, done. And what we want to do is really focus on moving away from just providing life safety, which means that during an earthquake, typically we would design a structure not to collapse. And of course, that's absolutely paramount. It's very important we still do that. But the question is, can we actually do a little bit better? Can we actually have structures be smarter so that they can deform, absorb the deformation, absorb all of this energy that is coming from the ground that is moving, and then after the earthquake somehow be able to uh, be undamaged? You know, if you can imagine if we were to complete our work and if it was implemented widely, for example, in Canada or elsewhere in the world, which is really our ultimate goal, Imagine a major earthquake occurred and we just all sort of held on to our chairs and our structures moved, but this was a controlled engineered response. So what will happen is during the earthquake, this steel piece is actually going to deform and is going to absorb a lot of the earthquake energy. And at the end of the earthquake, the goal is that every other structural member is not damaged. So this is kind of the concept behind this system, a sacrificial element that absorbs all of the seismic energy and is then replaced after the earthquake. We have very close collaborations with people in California, we have collaborations with people in Japan and very close ties with people in Italy and in the European research centers. Um, where, where there's been the most earthquakes I think are the areas that have uh, big thrusts of research and work done in, in our area so we want to be very closely affiliated with them and to work together. Um, I think the future looks like uh, basically uh, moving forward trying to build on the things that we've already developed. I think we, we're, we're very confident now that with the research that we've done that this is the direction that the field of earthquake engineering is going to take. We want to move this from a sort of a high-tech sort of uh, a sophisticated and complicated thing that only uh, very important structures would actually use to basically systems where we would implement this widely. But I would say in general that all of the work that we're doing is really at that big turn that our field is taking and it's contributing to that change or that shift. There's um, between eight and ten sort of students, researchers that work directly under uh, or in my group or in my, under my supervision and in terms of the topics, uh, just to give you an idea, we have uh, thrust area and cast steel, rocking structures, viscoelastic systems, uh, we've developed a bracing system here where um, when the brace stretches or it goes into tension or compression, it basically has an interior spring mechanism that pulls it back. So these are the family of self-centering structures and in a way we call them smarter structures because they actually come back and they actually straighten themselves out after the major earthquake. So I guess this is uh, as quick uh, an overview as I can do and uh,